What is up you guys? Welcome back to Kubrick for another episode of Building the Falcon's Nest, which finally is starting to look like a proper medieval fortress, just like I wanted it to. To be honest, I thought this series would be over by now, but back then I wasn't expecting that I would spend so much time on just a rock work. So I hope you don't mind spending some more time with me on this project, that is, if you want to see the completed build, of course. And if you are new here, then you should definitely check out the previous episodes of this series and subscribe to the channel for more awesome LEGO stuff. But back to what we have in store for this episode. I promise you guys that today we'll be done with 99% of the rock work and we'll be making more pleasant stuff from now on, meaning the actual fortress buildings. So get ready for a lot of light bluish grey brick stacking and let's get this episode started right now. And what we'll start from is actually a small hole that I received just as I was finishing making the previous episode. And guess what it is? Yep more light bluish grey slopes and I hope it will be enough for completing the whole rock work already. But that is of course not everything I got because I was lucky enough to find a seller with not only slopes but also some other needed accessories. So I got some of these trans clear sliders for the water, a couple of grill covered helmets, few crossbows, quivers, a raccoon skin hat, but I don't know what for yet. And some monkey costumes for a little side project I started working on in the meantime. Ok, so now that we have the much needed slopes, we can finally move on to finishing the rocks and making the walls of the fortress. I've started with the rockwork of course, making it a bit higher here than the rest to really show that the walls are completely embedded into the rocks and the whole fortress is built on top of them. Then it was time to move to the actual wall. And here the job was relatively simple, just repeating the same or a similar texture I used in the previous episode, trying to make it look a bit crumbled but still sort of clean and smooth if that makes sense. I have to say that the result is exactly what I was counting on, so I am now super excited for continuing the build, but at the same time I am a bit afraid of that. And that is because of the angled wall that will be the base for the tower, which I already know that will be a lot of work, so I better skip the time lapse here and try to figure it out off screen. Yep, just like I thought. I made some progress, but it isn't what I was hoping for. I've been stuck on this piece of rock work for 3 days now and I'm still not happy of how it looks. To have the wall even on the corner, I have a half stud gap in the rock work and that is something that I just can't stand. Even though I could fix it with some jumpers or snot bricks, it's still too fragile and to be honest it doesn't look as good as I would like it to. So what I'll do now is tear it all down, start again from the beginning and we'll see how it goes from there. Ok guys, I am back again this time with a fully completed rock work and a part of the wall made even with the one on the left. And boy was it a good decision to scrap it all and start over. I've moved the edge a bit to the right and thanks to that I was able to embed the wall closer to the rocks so I got rid of any gaps and connected it all firmly so now it's all solid as a rock. 
And that is a very valuable tip for you guys as well as myself in the future. If you're struggling with a design, don't be afraid to start over. I've been stuck on this part for 3 or 4 days and I didn't want to start over because I thought I would lose a lot of time again, but when I did finally destroy what I was struggling with, I made this whole thing in less than 2 hours. And now I can finally move on to the simpler things, that is the rest of the walls on the right side. And since it is something we've already been doing before, I'm going to stop talking for a bit and I'll let you enjoy the time lapse of stacking all of the light grey pieces and I'll see you when it's done. So yes guys, we now have most of the walls done and it just looks so good right now. We have 3 of the sides almost completed and as for the back side, I think here I will make a little cross section, not only to save some parts, but most importantly to be able to see what's on the inside of the mock. You should probably already know that I'm a sucker for interiors, so I could not skip one in this build. But that will be something to do in the next episode. As for now, I still have two more things I want to show you. One is actually less important for the build, but very heartwarming overall, because I just received my pick a brick order from the standard category that I ordered over a month ago. And to be honest, I can't really recall what I got back then, so let's check it out, shall we? So we have a weathered cape, a couple of different armor and accessories pieces, the new viking torsos from my medieval mocks, some black wands to be used as arrows since my falcons have black quivers, this new flat chest cover, couple of animals, some hair pieces and heads, this sparkling kitty is actually for my daughter along with the pink frog, and then we have some trans clear clips which will be super useful in many mocks, some dark grey corners that I will have to give back to the lion's castle since I borrowed a few of those for the rock work, some silver candles, olive green leaves and a few more random pieces. So overall many nice pieces, but not actually crucial ones for this mock, but it's always a good day when a lego order comes in, right? 
And the second thing I wanted to show you guys is the prototype for the crenellations I want to make on the walls. As they say, often the best solutions are simple yet unexpected. And here it totally makes sense. Like I said previously, I don't want to make full machiculations all around the build, but only on the future gatehouse, so I think this type of crenellations will look best here. They serve their purpose by covering the soldiers with merlons, and have angle slits in the embrasures for easier shooting, so what else to ask for? The look definitely fits the overall aesthetics of the fortress, and will for sure look even better placed all around the build. One thing that I still need to do here is making the walls a bit taller, so the fortress will look even better, but for now I really like how the structure turned out. I mean come on, this thing is starting to look so epic, I can't wait to continue with more work on it. So the next step will be finishing the backside with that cross section hole I talked about earlier, and then I think I will move to making the inside walls and the courtyard before I go even higher. But for that you will have to wait a bit more than I will, because I am so hyped for it, then I'll start building as soon as I finish with this video. Now it's time for you to let me know what you think about the progress I've made in the comment section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to make sure you won't miss another episode of this series as well as any other LEGO videos I'm making. For now, I am out of here, so have a great rest of the day and as always remember to keep it bricking.